Thanks, Simon. Hope you're going well. Congratulations on the call up. I guess first question for me would be, you know, when did you find out that you were getting called into the Socceroos camp? What was the conversation like? Yeah, it was a pretty good conversation where um, Graham Arnold came down to a game uh, just before West Brom. He came to the hotel and he spoke to me, Riley McGree and uh, Tom Glover and he just um, basically said uh, all the good things about um, what there is to come and that, um, yeah, that there'll be some good news coming my way and obviously then I received some messages uh, on WhatsApp and yeah. And as a follow-up, mate, it seems like you've made a rather seamless transition from the A-Leagues and the Central Coast Mariners to Middlesbrough. Um, can you maybe walk us through what the transition's been like? What are the differences between the A-Leagues and the English Championship? How you've adjusted and do you think how well you've adjusted for that transition will help you now make the step up to senior international level? Yeah, for sure. I think um, at Mariners, I think I found my uh, my love for football again. I really enjoyed being there. And then um, again, coming to the to Middlesbrough, it was that sort of same feel where it was a it felt like a family um, there. It felt uh, like a really positive environment. And um, ever since I stepped foot in the door, it's been it's been great. I've been able to play some of my best football on the pitch. Some of the wins, we're not, we're not getting some of those wins, but uh, I know that with the squad that we have, we'll get that. But um, yeah, just from the performances that I've put in and the fast growth that I've had, um, getting great minutes and uh, under the great coaching staff there, I'm sure I'll be able to adapt to senior football. Obviously learning off some of the, the boys here who've been to um, the World Cup and played many games with them, I'm, I'm learning in training every day and um, with the coaching here, I'll, I'm sure I'll learn very quick. Thanks, Joey. Uh, Marco? <coughs> G'day, Sam. I'm just wondering, you just I mentioned about how, how well you've been doing there. Did it almost surprise you how seamlessly you, you know, sort of fit it, uh, you know, had sort of fitted in and, and you know, and, and that you played most of the matches over there in what's been a great start for you, like, you know, um, you know personally? Yeah, for sure. I think um, I'm just extremely grateful that um, I've been given the minutes that I've been given and um, I'm going to continue working hard and uh, obviously uh, I, I hope that I still get those minutes on the pitch and I'm going to keep pushing and working hard in training so that I do. And um, again, like, like we said, it comes with um, getting those results and I feel like we're close. But um, again, I feel like the coach has put um, his faith in me and um, I'm just trying to um, give that back to him on the pitch. But you've always had the sort of potential. What was it that sort of flicked the switch last season at the Mariners that, you know, that helped you become a major part of their um, championship win and then sort of get this move to, uh, to like England and now, you know, being on the verge of your first cap? Again, I think from the learning curves that I have had overseas and um, some of the difficult seasons that I had was, uh, was a massive opportunity for me to kind of sit back and just um, actually uh, understand what I've learned and then apply that to the, to the season that I had last year. And um, a big part of that was uh, Nick Montgomery and, and uh, his assistant Serge, like the way they encouraged me on the pitch to just play as how I play and um, do whatever I do in the front third and do what I love basically. But obviously I've got to defend and do my part for the team. But um, again, just that encouraging um, uh, and motivation in, in training and when I get out there just to go and um, express myself and play my best football, that's what um, helped me have the season I had and yeah. Thanks, Marco. Uh, Tom? Yeah. Hey, Sammy. Um, it's like it's strange. You were one minute you're putting the ball past Tom Glover, the next minute you're signing with him <laughs> at Middlesbrough. Um, how helpful was it to have him coming in at the same time as a new boy, but also to have Riley there as a, as an established teammate who could show you the ropes? Yeah, for sure. Like knowing um, Riley and Tom were going to be at the club, uh, it's a massive help for sure. I think. Um, even before signing, I spoke to Riley and he spoke extremely highly about the club and the, the coaching staff and the boys. So it did make a decision a lot easier for sure. And then um, obviously from, from day one, Riley knows the club inside and out pretty much. So it just helps having that and um, it makes that transition a lot easier. And then uh, obviously Tom knew, we're both new. So we kind of had uh, 
just bounce off each other and um, we're learning together and again Riley helps us both out and the boys are great there so they're all friendly and we just get along great. And you mentioned uh, Monty, he's obviously in the headlines, he's, he's on the shortlist for the, uh, the job at Hibs. Um, are you not surprised presumably that other clubs have come calling for him after what he did last year? Yeah, 100%. I think there's been uh, rumours in the past, but um, what he's done with the with the team that he's had, um, again, he's, for both seasons, they've been the youngest uh, team in the league and um, the results that he's got, and especially after the season that we um, that we had last year, I mean, credit to him, he's a brilliant um, player manager and he's uh, he's coached a team that uh, with with uh, not a lot of experience at um, first team level, but he's... Um, He's, uh, he's got the best out of us and he's, he's had success. Thanks, Tom. Uh, back to you, Marco. Sam, has Zani said to you um, about what, you know, his plans for you are on Sunday and, uh, you know, where he's going to use you in attack and where, whether you're starting and, and also what's it been like, you know, so far with the, uh, with the uh, what's the name, training, uh, you know, sessions over there? Again, I think it's been um, kind of just a sort of introductory sort of a couple of sessions that we've had. We've just um, we're just kind of getting the feel for each other and starting to learn um, about like, how best the team gels. Obviously, um, there's a lot of boys that have spent spent time together at the World Cup, so obviously that's for myself learning to um, adapt to the style and learn how we, how we play. But um, again, I'm just I'm just trying to take in as much information as possible. And uh, hopefully I do get my first cap on Sunday. Uh, Joey? Yeah, cheers. Um, so I was wondering, admittedly, you know, you're still finding your feet in the championship, but maybe you could walk us through the similarities and the differences that you've found between the actual football that is played in the championship versus the A-League, the habits of teams, what they do, what they do similar to A-League teams, what they do differently? I think, in a way, it is quite similar. Um, the A-League is unpredictable in terms of that um, any team can kind of beat any team. Um, and it's the same with the Championship. There's a, um, there's a sort of unpredictable element when you go out to each game, no matter if it's home or away, that there's you, you don't know who, who's going to win, you could never guess. And um, it's just whoever shows the most heart on the day. And um, that's, I feel like that, that's a big similarity um, between the leagues. And uh, obviously on a, on a bigger scale, the, the championship is a lot more physical and tactical. And um, I find that that is a similarity, but again, the championship does, does um, show that on a bigger scale. And you, you talked about you know Monty and he's done an amazing job. In your experience with the Mariners, if Monty was to leave and go to Scotland, how sustainable do you reckon the success that the Mariners have? How much of that is Monty versus how much of that is the culture that has been established around Gosford that would continue without him? I think that that culture was created by Monty. I think I was there um, at Mariners uh, three, four seasons ago and. Um, it was nothing like it is now, and hopefully it can it can stay like that. If Monty is to move away, move away, the a lot of that success and the culture that was built in the in Gosford and the whole of Central Coast is down to him. Um, he brought again a young team together that um, that got the biggest crowd to ever come to the stadium, and um, it, it was fantastic to be a part of myself. And um, it's just amazing, and hopefully that if he does move away then the success for Central Coast Mariners keeps going on and the success for him going away as well. Thanks Joey. Uh, Tom? Hey, just back to, to Middlesbrough and um, Sammy, um, <coughs> I'd be intrigued to see if you're as positive after you've been through a winter in the northeast of England but um, what, just off the field, how easy have you found to settle if you've got somewhere to live? You know, have the club sort of helped you on that front as well? Yeah, they were really quick in um, wanting to make sure the players had settled really quick. Um, I'm in a great place. I, I live next to one of the boys who's a uh, similar age to me, uh, Morgan Rogers. So we, um, yeah, we're, we're good friends. And again, um, Riley, Riley's been a great help with um, like what to do around the area and everything. Because obviously, um, 
he's been there for a while, but um, yeah, from from day one, it's been it's been great. Thank you. Anything else? Anything else from you, Tom? Joey, back to you. Cool. So we just want to ask, Mexico, you're coming up, uh, well, you'll be hoping to come up and play against them on the weekends. Difficult opponents in a stadium that's probably going to be full of a lot of their fans. How much do you know about the Mexicans and what are you expecting that they'll throw at you on the weekend? Well, I think they're a, they're a great team. They've shown that over many years. Um, they play positive football, but I think um, the focus is with us and um, we are going to go to them and we are going to take the game to them and we're going to show them what we can do as a nation and as a footballing team. So again, it will be a, a great challenge to, to play against them, a top 10 nation, and um, especially in a stadium where it will be, hopefully it will be packed but um, with lots of uh, Mexican fans so um, it will be a great challenge and um, I'm just looking forward to hopefully getting out on the pitch. Because you trialled at LA Galaxy a few years ago, were there any of the Mexican players you'd be coming up against around that setup when you were there? Um, yeah so I was, I was very close to signing and um, I, I was speaking to um, Carlos Vela which I, I don't feel like he, I'm not sure if he's a part of the squad anymore but um, just even seeing the talent that he had, um, there's obviously similar talent within that squad. And, um, but I don't think there was any um, Mexican players at the time then. All right, we might, uh, we might wrap it there, guys. Um, thanks for your time this afternoon. Uh, oh, Marco, you got one more question? We, we'll wrap it yeah, up. Yeah, sorry, mate. Fine, Sammy's right. been any, any uh, sort of, uh, what's his name, being a on the verge of your first cap and your first camp, any sort of initiations for you? Any songs that you've sung, <laughs> you know, in front of everyone yet? Not quite yet. Um, I think that's going to be done tomorrow night, but uh, yeah, there'll, there'll be a bunch of laughs. And uh, I'm, I think some of the boys have been practicing in their rooms already, but um, yeah, I, I already know my song and I'm, I'm quite comfortable doing it, so yeah. Can you, can you give us a hint or is it secret? My song is is a Jamaican song because I'm part Jamaican. Uh, it's called Three Little Birds by Bob Marley. Nice. Yeah.